our planet. Our planet is now on fire. Australia is on fire, and it's bigger than you think. 12.35 million acres of land have been burnt by bushfires so far. That's almost twice the size of Belgium, and three times more land than the 2018 California fires and Brazil's 2019 Amazon fire combined. Flames have reportedly reached 70 meters high. That's taller than the Sydney Opera House. At least 19 people have been killed and more than 1,400 homes have been destroyed. Residents and tourists have been forced to relocate. Just get out while we can. Nearly 500 million animals have died in New South Wales alone. The fires aren't just in one location. They're raging everywhere across the country. So what ignited this deadly crisis? Well, bushfire season is nothing new in Australia, but this summer has been one of the hottest and driest in the country's history. Since September, the combination of drought, unprecedented heat waves, and strong gusty winds has created a recipe for disastrous fire conditions. Conditions. On top of that, the smoke from bushfires generates its own weather, sparking thunderstorms with lightning and strong winds, which create even more wildfires. Scientists have been predicting such extreme weather for years, warning that bushfires will become even more frequent as climate change worsens. Although the weather has cooled slightly in parts of Australia, authorities say with months of summer left, the worst is yet to come. When you think of Siberia, you likely don't think about wildfires. After all, Siberia is one of the coldest places on the planet during the winter time. But in summer, temperatures can be rather moderate. But our changing world has made their summers increasingly hotter. And now officials in the region are battling an unprecedented crisis that has implications for all of us. ABC's Patrick Reville traveled to Siberia to see the fight against the wildfires firsthand. What can be one of the coldest places on Earth is on fire. Gigantic infernos burning across Siberia on an unprecedented scale, a climate catastrophe. The wildfires burning in Russia now are bigger than all the fires raging across the globe combined, bigger than those in the US, Canada, Turkey and Greece put together. This the view as passengers fly into Yakutia, a region 3,000 miles from Moscow. But in Siberia, before you can fight wildfires, first you have to get to them. So we're driving out now, hopefully to try and reach one of the fire teams that are working near the village. We've got to drive over this dirt road. See, it's not really a road. Come to Yakutia because it's one of the front lines of climate change. Much of the region is in the Arctic, and in winter it's one of the coldest inhabited places on Earth. But summers are warm, and this year is seeing an extreme heat wave and historic drought, one of the hottest, driest summers on record. Ten times more fires are burning than usual. Smoke from them has reached Alaska, and for the first time in history, the North Pole. So this is where we were trying to get to, the camp where the guys are basically going out and trying to fight the fires. Say they don't have enough equipment, they have a tractor over there that's broken down because it doesn't have enough oil. This group from Russia's forestry fire service, known as Aviales Akhrana, have been here for nearly a month. It is a vastly unequal fight. They say they are short of men and equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Afanasi is one of hundreds of local residents who volunteered to fight the fires because of the shortage of manpower. He's saying if the wind gets up, that will already start to spread all over the trees here. Within 10 15 minutes, it could be everywhere, really. The team's main tools are digging trenches and controlled burns like this. But there is only so much they can do. When the wind gets up, the fire spreads rapidly. Here, another group forced to retreat. 
and this is what happens when the fires get past the teams. The flames engulfing this village, over 30 buildings destroyed, only burnt out cars and smoldering rubble left. The record drought fueling the fires has been linked by scientists to climate change. And the change in Yakutia's climate is already visible. Parts of Siberia are warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. The smog is really bad this morning. You can really feel it in your eyes and in your throat. People have spent nearly a month struggling in the dirty air. All this smoke is a problem far beyond Russia. The fires are releasing record quantities of carbon dioxide. This year, already more than Britain's entire annual CO2 emissions, based on an estimate by a European Union agency. You really feel the scale of the fire here. This whole area burned only about three weeks ago. You see, just as far as you can look, it's all blackened and burned. With increased temperatures now believed to be inevitable, Yakutia's massive fires are likely to only get worse. Scientists say another sign of how fast and how drastically the planet's climate is changing. Patrick Rievel, ABC News, Yakutia, Russia. The skyline of San Francisco looking more like an image from Mars. The orange glow from wildfires burning miles away, shrouding the city's landmarks, the smoke blocking out the sun. The middle of the day felt like dusk, and it is unnerving. I was wondering what time it was, and then I looked outside, and it looked like doomsday. I mean, you could tell something is horribly going wrong, and as far as going to work and breathing in all this, this pollution is definitely not healthy for us as in the Bay Area. It feels like the end of the world. It's pretty scary. I mean, I'm a, I'm a lifelong Californian, and it makes me weep for what we've done to my poor state. And those fires continue to rage across the western United States, driven on by strong, dry winds, burning more of California this year than ever before. And to the north in Oregon, an unprecedented number of fires destroying some whole communities. It is the speed with which these fires spread that's especially alarming. The people who lived in this neighborhood had barely any time to escape. Sheriff's coming through, going, level three, get out. Wow. Get out. And uh, yeah, grab some papers. Grab some papers and stuff. How and do you uh, make throw it in. This is it. This is what I've got. Some didn't make it out. Deaths have been confirmed in a number of states, and officials say that number will go up. We expect to see a great deal of loss uh, as a result of these fires, both in terms of structures and in terms of human lives. Um, it, as I mentioned earlier, could be the greatest loss in human lives and property due to wildfire in our state's history. This map from Oregon's Office of Emergency Management shows what they're dealing with. Dozens of these fires all across the state and many of them still burning largely out of control. Thousands of people have been told to leave their homes and head for safety. And officials warn that the changing climate means what's record-breaking right now is just a glimpse of what the future will look like for these places. They say the Las Piedras River remains as God made it coiling through pristine rainforest, bursting with wildlife and towering trees. We are motoring to the middle of nowhere, which is exactly where conservationist Paul Rosalie wants to take us. So why this spot? In the whole Amazon, there's nowhere that's as important as the Western Amazon. There's more plant and animal life here than ha ever has existed in the history of the fossil record. So every single acre here, every inch of this place is so crucial to protect. Paul helped found a 55,000 acre preserve in the heart of the Amazon off the Las Piedras River. 
It's part of an organization called Jungle Keepers, dedicated to protecting the precious rainforest. We're trying to help people that were loggers to become protectors of the forest, people that were gold miners, saying that you can be a professional that protects this land. This is a beautiful, beautiful plant. It is absolutely stunning the way it just, they shingle up the tree like it this. It looks painted. For generations, pristine rainforests like this have helped buffer the rest of the world's ills when it comes to climate change. There's a reason they call them the mother of the forest. Uh, well, it's like Pandora. Nicknamed the lungs of the planet because for millions of years, they absorbed carbon dioxide. We're in Alarming news that the Amazon is now a net contributor of carbon dioxide and that it is perilously close to a tipping point beyond which it cannot recover. These kinds of burns are what are causing 10 to 15 percent of all the CO2 in the atmosphere, right? That's right. Almost a fifth of human carbon emissions are coming from this. From out of control fires. To those mile long scars from gold mining to sandstorms in the Amazon. This looks like Saudi Arabia rather than Western Peru. All of it contributing to the deforestation that is endangering the precious wildlife. Well, the Amazon is starting to waver. The next decade is going to decide the fate of the Amazon. Our journey in Peru on the western side of the Amazon began by car along the Trans-Amazonian Highway. It used to take more than two days for Paul to get to his preserve by boat, but over the past couple of years, loggers hacked out this road, which Paul likens to a shortcut through hell. People see the green and they think, oh, it's beautiful. Now, this, this used to be a rainforest. And just a few miles down that bumpy road, another pasture being born from a fire in the forest. They're burning these on purpose to clear the land. Wow, after logging it. Dude, that's dangerous, man. Wow, that'll burn you. It's incredibly yeah. hot. There's no replanting this. There's no reforesting this. No, you're talking about 800-year-old trees, complex ecosystems, primary forest. And this is going on dozens of times a day, oh, everywhere. everywhere across the Amazon. Everywhere. This is where climate change is happening. This is where the extinction crisis is happening. We're allowing this. So why are they doing it? These people have no other option for work. Peru ranks fifth in the world for primary forest lost. Neighboring Brazil is number one. Its president, Jair Bolsonaro, allowing the rate of deforestation to soar to a 12-year high. We finally arrive at the Jungle Keeper station. I'm standing about 130 feet up in the canopy of an ironwood tree. Now, this is one of the keystone species of the entire Amazon rainforest, and everything that you see in front of you right now is protected by the jungle keepers, but that is just a drop in the vast ocean of green that is the Amazon. The rangers spend their days monitoring the river for poachers and loggers. Some of the team are former loggers themselves. Hay muchas actividades ilegales que subviste. Hay una temporada donde sí se mira bastante este madereros. Along with the loggers are the illegal miners. There are so many thousands of gold mines gouged into the forest that this photo from NASA recently captured what looked like rivers of gold. But that's not gold. It's thousands of pits gouged into the river left by mining. Everything you see around me is part of what's called La Pampa. Until just a couple of years ago, all of this was pristine Amazon rainforest. But hundreds of gold miners were given concessions here, turning this into a vast desert that stretches for mile after mile. And then, shockingly, a sandstorm whips up, making the rainforest look more like the Sahara. That freak phenomenon increasingly common across this moonscape. The end result, the fires and mines and pastures have encroached on the habitat of 85% of the endangered species here. Some of them wind up at Magali Salinas' doorstep. Hi, how are you? The former flight attendant now rarely leaves what she has come to call simply the Amazon shelter. We receive animals coming from the operative authorities, police, or people that come in and they don't want it anymore and leave it us. She has rescued and cared for hundreds of animals, from howler monkeys to tapers. Poachers found her in the forest and they brought her to try to sell at a zoo? Yeah, yeah. How so, much money can people make off of selling an animal uh, like this? Probably he gave nothing. Probably he gave a hundred soles. Twenty-five dollars? Yeah, no less. Yeah, twenty-five dollars, probably. For an endangered species? Yeah. 
Back in the Jungle Keeper's preserve, as the sun sets, the forest comes alive. And Paul, whose life's work has been protecting the rainforest, remains hopeful. It's not too late. We're, we're, we're at the point now where we still have a chance to protect all these species, to protect the home to millions of indigenous people and this massive, beautiful biological treasure on our planet. That's why we need to focus on it so much right now. Climate change is happening and it is here. It has caused the loss of many people's lives the loss of people's homes, and the loss of many animals. Something needs to be done. Hope you found this video, can't say entertaining, but very informative. If so, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned to part two. Thank you. Have a good night and take care.